Hello. So in this video, we're going to go through a lesson plan for teaching multi-part concepts. And I, I recognize that that's a little bit more vague and general than the lesson plans I normally give on this channel. But part of the reason is that you can use this lesson plan to teach a lot of different types of things, provided there are multiple sort of discrete pieces. So, uh, for instance, uh, today, on time of filming, um, I, ha I did this lesson plan with my writing for the social sciences students about um, the ethics of researching human subjects. So basically the, the first thing that you want to do for this exercise is divide the topic into its parts. So I, I created four parts, um, the Institutional Review Board, IRB, um, Informed Consent, privacy and confidentiality, and risks and benefits. So these are four broad categories or particular things that students would need to know about in, in order to understand the ethics of testing human subjects. But you can, do this in a, you can do this in a bunch of different ways. Ethos, pathos, and logos, for instance, uh, if you're doing uh, a, an introductory rhetoric course or, or even an advanced rhetoric course if you wanted to. Um, something like political, forensic, and ceremonial rhetoric, same thing. Um, if you are teaching a literature course, the different components of Aristotle's theory of tragedy, for instance, or different uh, forms of poetry, sonnets, pantoums, whatever it is, anything that has these sort of specific categories, you can do this type of lesson with. And basically, this is one of those lessons where the students largely do the work of teaching because you divide the class into however many groups you have uh, categories for. So I had my students today count off into groups of four. Um, if you were doing ethos, pathos, and logos, or um, introduction, body, conclusion in terms of essay structure, whatever it is, you could have them count off into three groups. That's totally fine. It doesn't make any real difference. And basically, you have them plan and give an in-class presentation where they teach their colleagues about that topic. Now, one caveat here, it is really useful to have them read something about that subject matter before you expect them to do this. Otherwise, the information that they give may or may not be reliable. So with my social sciences students, we had read a chapter on the ethics of testing with human subjects, and so they could pull from that material in order to give their presentations. So I would always give my students some sort of source material so that you know they, have, they at least have some place they can go to to get correct information for their presentations. Now, I had my students, I just said three to five minute presentations. I think that's very reasonable for a basic presentation that you could plan in class and then execute in that same class. Um, I told them if they wanted to do visuals like a PowerPoint or something like that, they could, but it wasn't required. And I think that's a good way to go because some groups will feel more comfortable sort of creating an impromptu PowerPoint slide uh, presentation and some groups won't. Some groups will just want to come up and sort of talk through the concepts, and I think either way works. So, what do I actually ask them to do in their presentation? Well, four things, four, uh, four three and a half requirements, uh, four things that I suggest. We need a definition of this thing. So, what, what does this word or concept actually mean? What is, for instance, the IRB, the Institutional Review Board? What is ethos? What is um, Hamartia, if you were doing Aristotelian tragedy? What is a sonnet? Whatever it is, what does this, this thing actually mean? What's the key information we need to know about it? And what exactly they count as key information can be kind of interesting but you want them to figure out 
what your student, what their classmates, your students need to know about this topic. Um, and with so with something like the so, my social sciences class, I I do make a distinction. They can either talk about what they as students need to know, what they as student researchers need to know, or what they would need to know for professional social sciences research. That may be a useful distinction in terms of key information. In some cases, that will be useful. In other cases, it may not be. But that's the first two. What is it? What's the key information? Um, the third thing is what's the importance of this topic? Why does it matter in the context of whatever it is? Why, uh, why does confidentiality and privacy matter in the context of social sciences research? Why does a pantoum form matter in the context of poetry? Whatever it is, why is it important? What are the stakes for this? And then the last one, this is one that sometimes works better than others. Um, I could imagine a lot of scenarios in which it works really well. In other scenarios, it doesn't work as well, um, which is give us an example, either an, an, a real world example or an example that you have sort of imagined as a group. So with something like the IRB, the Institutional Review Board, that's a hard one to really give an example of. You can give an example of, of experiments that would not be IRB approved today, and there's a lot of them, but that's a bit harder. But if it's something like, uh, give us an example of logos, that's fairly easy. You can do that. If it's, a, if it's something like, um, give us an example of an effective conclusion to an essay or, or effective conclusion strategies, that's something you can definitely do. So that's, a, I think, a really useful one for helping illustrate what these concepts are about. But in some cases, it's it's a thing that students may struggle with, depending on what the concept is. So that's the way that I uh, I would approach teaching these sort of multi-element, multi-component concepts. Um, break them into discrete ideas, discrete categories, whatever it is. Um, assign groups, have them develop presentations, and give the presentations in class having them answer at the very least, what is this thing? What do we need to know about it? Why is it important? And then hopefully give some examples of it. Another thing that I did, and this was a more sort of minor thing, I kind of tacked briefly on the end of their, their prep time, but I gave them one minute as a group to talk about what questions they think the audience would likely still have at the end of their presentation. What would the audience want to know more about? And then after that, I gave them another minute to polish their presentations if that, if that thought brought up anything that wasn't already in their presentation. So if the, the things that they thought their audience might still be wondering at the end of their presentations if they wanted to, to answer any of those questions in the presentation, I gave them another minute to do that sort of polishing. And then they presented. 